Well, hey guys, welcome back to Field Trips and welcome to Nebraska, Ogallala, Nebraska. I just got here in the Keystone Cougar, my home on wheels. If you're new to field trips, I basically live in this thing full time and have for almost five years now. And I'm fishing my way across all 50 states and now it's time for Nebraska. I just drove up from Kansas today. I feel like I got kind of the full Nebraska experience. I drove through two different hailstorms in the wide open plains of nothingness. And during the second hailstorm, I actually got an emergency weather alert that there was a tornado warning in my area as I'm driving through a storm with hail and about 20 feet of visibility. It was terrifying, but we made it. And I think this is gonna be a pretty sweet stop. So we are here in Ogallala to fish Lake McConaughey, or as most people call it, Lake Mac. This is a massive reservoir, something like 27 miles long. This reservoir was created mostly for irrigation, for all the farmland that is here in Nebraska and in this area. Now at the same time, we're about 20 miles from the border of Colorado. So there is some elevation in this part of Nebraska. It's not totally flat like I expected. And we're here at Lake Mac to meet up with a guy named John. He works for Lake Big Mac Spoiled Guide Service. And we're gonna be going out for walleye in Nebraska. I always think of walleye as kind of a northern fish. They're here in Lake Mac in Nebraska. I'm not sure what techniques we're gonna use. We'll find that out, but I literally just pulled up. I gotta get the Keystone Cougar ready to go, set up, get my home, and turn it into a home. So I will see you guys in the morning when we meet up with John. I think this is gonna be a treat. And hopefully if we catch some walleye, I'll be cooking them up for you guys. John? Hey man. Rob, good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. All right guys, so just met up here with John. But well, this is pretty interesting. These guys are literally just launching off the beach here. Not really what's going on. Looks like they got some kind of truck launches it for you. Some kind of tractor looking thing. Interesting. Never seen anything quite like this. Do have a little more wind than I thought. <laughs> you pay for this service or they just... Like, this is kind of a pretty unique body of water for Nebraska. Like looking at the map, there's not... Yeah, is it's this the, the biggest? It's the biggest yeah. lake in Nebraska. We got a far run to start, or? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy just how like long and straight and there's not many like fingers coming off or anything. It's just kind of like one big long. Yeah, yeah. All right guys, just made our run over to the first spot. We're gonna start fishing and I'll tell you what, I mean, it's not super windy, good little breeze, but it's just so flat and wide open and this lake is so long. A little, little bit of a sporty crossing, not gonna lie. A little sporty. But we made it. John's getting the trolling motor down now. So we're gonna start off drifting for these walleye. I think John's gonna show us kind of the rigs that we're using. He's, he's getting out a drift sock now to slow our drift because there's enough wind that we're gonna be moving too fast without it. Lindy rig, I've heard of that. Uh, kind of like a crawler harness. Yeah, must have a slow death and a uh, Mackey's smiley blade. Bottom bouncer. I've used this kind of rig for all kinds of fish, man. I use it for rainbow trout in California, and it's just kind of a good, good way to cover some water and stay on the bottom. 141. 141. Wow. You know, I think a lot of people like me, I, I've never spent any time in Nebraska and I just think of it as just all flat. completely flat. Yeah, but this area at least, not not really. The western half of the state, it seems like, it's got some, some elevation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives a good action in the back. All right, so while we're drifting and bottom bouncing with these crawler harnesses, these night crawlers on these, these bottom bouncing rigs, uh, John says I can go ahead and cast up front with basically, it's basically a Ned rig. He said there's a good chance I could pick up a, a walleye cast in. He said that there's also a smallmouth in this area I could pick up a smallmouth. So I'm gonna do that while we wait for a bite back here and see. John said that uh, it's kind of a tough time of year. These walleye are transitioning from up shallow where they've been uh, out to deeper water. And so he said during this time they can be real finicky and, and really kind of not want to bite. They can shut down. So we'll see. Not here at the prime time. But I got faith. I'm feeling good, feeling confident. So I'm gonna get to casting. We're kind of double time here. See if we can make it happen. I mean, it's gonna be too shallow to cast that way, huh? Should I cast? Yeah. Okay. 
Got him. Oh no. No. Hey, that's a good sign. That was a take. It was pretty subtle. I think, I feel like it was a walleye, not a smallie. Man, right, like right here. In fact, our spread's gonna kinda, this guy might, especially if it was more than one fish. Man, all right. Pulled me up, all and ready. Yeah. All right, guys, well, first spot, it's been slow. There's some other boats trolling here. No one's really got anything. We're marking tons of fish, but they're just not biting. So we're gonna make a move. John says we're gonna go to another spot. As my girlfriend's dad says, we're gonna go try to find some stupid ones that are willing to bite. So it's pretty cool. John's saying the lake's way down right now, but because of that, there's just tons of beach, long beaches all the way around the lake. And there are hundreds of RVs. People have basically set up like compounds right on the sand, right on the beach. They're using tractors to get these down here. I was asking them because uh, it'd be cool to bring my rig down here sometime and just camp out on the beach here on the lake. But He's saying four wheel drive truck may not cut it. You kind of need a tractor to get it down here, but pretty sweet. People got some pretty sweet setups out here, right on the water. But we just made it to the spot where it sounds promising. We got some intel. There are fish here willing to feed. So we're dropping the lines in now. Let's see if we can't get some fish in the boat. There it is. There we go. There we go. Fish on. Uh, I don't know if it's going to go 15. Let me give you a All right, guys. First fish on. I don't think he's going to go 15. <laughs> but hey, it's all right. First blood. Right species, though. Yeah. That's a good sign. Progress. We didn't tell you to catch a walleye today. We didn't say how big. Hey, man, hey, 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 the skunk's <laughs> off, dude. First one's the hardest. So we've moved twice, and this last move was clear across the lake. We're not too far from the dam now, and been here maybe 15 minutes. First fish of the day, first fish off this spot, and it was a walleye, what we wanted. He's saying that they catch a lot of freshwater drum, catfish, white bass doing this. So we didn't know what it was gonna be, but it was a walleye. Target species, just not big enough. They gotta be 15 inches to keep, but we have now caught infinitely more fish than we had two minutes ago. So we're on the right track, feeling good about this spot. Now we just gotta wait for the right fish to bite. And I left my rod up here, it's probably about to get yanked in the water. It's feeling fishy over here, guys. I'm feeling good about this. I spotted that, man, I was on it, I was on it. I've been hawkeyeing these, these rod tips and I saw it kind of it looked like a bite and i wasn't sure and then sure enough it doubled over not the 11 pounder we were hoping for but that's okay 11 incher but that's a good sign man you gotta believe if one one will bite there's gotta be more in this area that are willing to bite too right. we'll get them thursday so i have to get home oh there we go dropped it huh it's okay though. Getting bites. Yeah. Nice. Feels a little bigger than the other one. Yep. White bass. Not the target. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm out. The bugs. Oh. Got it. Fish on. Walleye. Oh. Man, he's kind of. He's close. I don't know. <laughs> There we go, second walleye in the boat. Not a monster, but what do you think? He's close, huh? Oh, 14. No, Not quite. But hey, they're getting bigger. 14 incher, one inch shy of the minimum. 
All right, guys, so it's been a little bit of a grind. Honestly, we've been kind of running and gunning, going all over the place. John's taking us to, to multiple spots. We've talked to a lot of boats. He's been calling buddies, getting intel from them. We've talked to a bunch of boats that we've passed by. It's just a tough day, just one of those days where uh, it's just not on fire. Tough bite. We're marking tons of fish at several of these spots we've been to. So finally, we're kind of here in the home stretch. Towards the end of the day, we got a keeper white bass. And we get, now we got two shorts, two unders on the walleye, but we came back here to where we got that first under all the way down the lake, a long way. We decided to spend the rest of the day grinding out where we caught our one target species. And there we are, about five, 10 minutes into it, there's another one and bigger, not big enough, but bigger. So I think we made the right call. I think we're gonna grind it out the rest of the day right here. See if we can't force feed a few of these walleye on a day where they just don't want anything to do with it. The wind slicked out, it's nice and calm out here, which just makes for a beautiful day. But in my experience, fishing wise, a lot of times that's not a good thing. Too calm, too nice of a day, a lot of times equates a, a tough bite, but things are looking up. Second walleye, we still got some time. Let's see if we can't get dinner, dinner in the boat before we leave. Oh, oh, yep, look at that, still talking. Fish. That looks better. To, oh. Uh oh, I think it's around this other one. I, I think I got it out. I think I got it out. Oh, it's a drum? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Man, I've never eaten one of those. <laughs> well, hey, man. Picking up, though. Freshwater drum. He said that they catch quite a few of these. Now, these things have about a million names. Gasper Goo is one name. They call them that up here? I think you just call them drum. Sheephead. I've heard Sheephead. I've heard that. Yep, sheephead. Gasper Goo. But that's a freshwater drum, not the target species. We're going to go ahead and let him go. Because I'm confident we're about to get a walleye. Uh oh. Is that another bite there? Or what? Man, now I'm like, hoo, hoo, hoo. Action's heating up, you guys. Here at the end of the day, I told him many times I have been the kind of fourth quarter overtime comeback kid. And it's feeling fishier now than it has all day. So. There it is. There it is, dude. It's freaking on fire here now. Walleye. I think it's bigger. It's gonna be barely if it is, but close to that other size. You guys, hot and heavy now. <laughs> we, we have been grinding and not catching all day. And now uh, now I can't, I can't finish the sentence without us getting another bite. I'm like scared to take my eyes off the other rods. Dude, he look. Close, man, but I don't know. No. Hey, getting closer, man. We're getting warmer. 12 incher, then a 14 incher. Now we go with like a 14 and a half. Oh, 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 it pulled off right there. Man, right as I stopped recording, this one bent over and I had a fish on for a second. It popped free, split the hook. Let's see if we can get some keepers. I want some walleye for dinner. We've had three bites all day and then we just had three bites in five minutes. That's a, I think we made the right call coming back here. Oh, yeah? It's not fighting that hard. I feel like, what is it? Walleye. <laughs> Another one that's not gonna go 15. So we had that bite and he dropped it before we got to the rod and then John here kind of stuck with it and sure enough, the fish came back for it, but, or a different fish came back for it, can't know. But it has been kind of like boom and bust. So I'm gonna keep a hawk eye on these other rods in case there's another hungry one down here. John said he was feeling a lot of pressure. He guides all the time, but to come out here with a YouTuber, he was feeling the pressure, but now we're getting on some fish. We're figuring something out. There you go. Oh no. How do they let go of that? How are they gonna eat that thing, taste that, and be like, nah. I'm at uh, the snow fence. Alright, buddy. I don't think it's a snow fence. Oh, it's a fish. Is it a fish? No. We're gonna go get you a fish. That's all she wrote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a fish. Uh uh. No way. Dude, it's that's not a walleye. No way, that ain't a walleye, dude. <laughs> dude, 
<laughs> if it is, it's a monster. <laughs> this is something, this is something different. It's digging, man. You think that's another drum? Fish on, you guys. Hardest finding fish of the day, for sure. At the end of the day, it's fighting weird, man. What is that? No way. No way. Oh my gosh, you guys, no way. No way, dude. Raise him up. I'm trying. Oh my god! No way, dude! Overtime, bro! Oh my gosh! That is unbelievable! Are you kidding me, dude? That's how I do it. <laughs> that. You guys, we have been grinding all day. He said we gotta go at three o'clock. I noticed the time had passed. I was being quiet, not saying anything. It's 3.10. In these extra 10 minutes, my heart's going 100 miles an hour. I could not believe it when that fish came up. We have been like praying to every God you can think of for a 15 inch walleye. We did not catch a 15 inch walleye. We caught a tank. Oh my gosh. There it is. That is dinner. Lake Mac walleye. I can't believe we just pulled that oh, off, bro. Either, Are you kidding me, dude? That is a proper Lake Mac walleye at after the end of the day. The day's over. It was time to leave 10 minutes ago. John was nice enough here to, to stick it with me for an extra 10 minutes and there it is. We knew it was gonna be tough today. Everybody we've talked to has caught nothing but shorts and if anything, and there it is. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Insane, dude. Insane. I gotta get some like pictures. I gotta like get my head on straight. I can't believe that. I can't yeah, believe it. Yeah, it. keep your damn fish. Literally, guys, he was like, maybe you think you can make an episode work if we just go get a fish from one of the other guides and you can just cook it up? And I was like, yeah, I'll make a story out of it. Nah, keep your fish. We got our own. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, we are. Fishing is so friggin' crazy and frustrating and amazing all at the same damn time. Wow. Wow. As clutch as a fish can get, we were literally just reeling in. We were reeling in. We had re reeled up two of them to get out of here. And that fish bit one of the two that were still down. We're gonna get a measurement on this gal. I mean, she's definitely, she's going home. She's 15 all day, look at that. Almost 25. <gasps> John, I'll kill you, man. I will <laughs> That would have been like the most, the biggest emotional roller coaster of my whole life if that fish that had just flopped good, back in. That would have made good TV though. That would have made good TV. It would not have made good dinner. Like I have no words. I just, we gave up hope a while ago. It just was not our day. It's not anybody's day on this lake. We eating good tonight, ladies and gents. Put the chicken back in the freezer. God, Lee, I can't. All right, you guys, I am still just like beside myself. Cannot believe John here just pulled that rabbit out of his hat and put us on that fish at the very end of the day. We just talked to the guy that pulls the boats out here at the boat ramp at the beach. And he said that everybody struggled today. It was just one of those days. That's fishing. I was telling him, you know, hey, you, you know, you can't control it. It's always those days. He caught like 10 or 11 keepers yesterday he's joking all day should have been here yesterday should have been here yesterday you know and i said hey man that's just that's just fishing this is how it goes and then as we were reeling up throwing in the towel we already had two of the lines reeled in the third one went off and that is now my personal best walleye that i've ever caught i'm just beside myself tickled what a fun experience to me it just makes it that much cooler catching that fish on a day when nobody was catching fish and we weren't catching the right fish and we got it done. So now John's gonna clean this up. The guides at Lake Big Mac Spoiled clean your fish for you. So he's gonna clean this guy for me. Sounds a disease. Hmm? Sounds a 
disease. He does have it? Yep. No way. I've never heard of this. It's a what? A flesh eating? It's like muscle dystrophy in fish, is what they say. And it's not safe to eat. They don't recommend it. <laughs> I mean, I've been known to gamble before. <laughs> and the uh, emotional roller coaster continues. He warned me that in these bigger walleye, because we got a pretty good one, that they can get Sands disease. I've never heard of this. It's apparently some kind of muscle disorder, muscular dystrophy type of thing. And he said that in the bigger walleye it happens that there was a chance we were gonna cut this fish open and it was gonna have this and they do not recommend that you eat these fish. So after all that from zero to hero, we're kind of back down to zero because they're telling me I can't eat this fish. I'm right now debating in my head whether or not I want to risk that. But I mean, it seems like it's just on the top, like the underside. I wouldn't feed it to my dog. You wouldn't feed it to your dog. Okay, then let's not. Another sand disease? Yeah. Don't eat it, huh? I wouldn't eat it. You wouldn't eat it? I don't know anyone that would, but... Man. What a waste. What a shame. Well, hey, cheers, man. To a good day, regardless. Well, you guys, womp, womp. Turns out this sand disease or sandy flesh, I just Googled it, I've seen a variety of names for it. It's kind of common here in the Midwest in these walleye, especially the bigger ones. Apparently it's some kind of like viral infection that it takes a long time to kill the fish. But John here is kind enough. He said that he's got some walleye at home that I could take to cook up for you guys. So John, uh, for the second time today, is the hero and just making this happen. Really crazy, sand disease, I've never heard of this. I wanna learn more about it, but it sounds like maybe they don't know too much about it. But we're gonna cook up walleye anyways, cause John here's the man. What an incredible day. Like I said, today was tough. We knew it was tough. It was tough for everybody. He killed it yesterday. But you guys can book a, a trip with John and some of the other guides at BigMacSpoiled.com. It's Lake Big Mac Spoiled Guide Service. John was such a pleasure on the boat. We just had fun all day, even though we weren't catching fish all day. And then we got that giant at the end. Such a good time. Thanks so much, man. Hey, thank you. Really appreciate it, man. I did too. Had a great time today. It was fun. He was stressing. He was stressing. He didn't think we were going to get it done. We got, I told him not to worry. And then at the end, I was stressing, but we got it done. We got it done. So I'm going to follow him to the house. He's going to hook me up with some walleye so I can cook it up for you guys since mine was whatever, a zombie fish. And then uh, I'll see you guys in the kitchen and we're going to cook these guys up. All right, guys. Well, quite the emotional roller coaster of a day. And I had an absolute blast. I learned so much from John. He was such a pleasure to be on the water with. But anyways, now it's time to cook up the fish. And I'm sorry you kind of got shafted a little bit. Not much of a cleaning segment since that fish had the Sands disease I kept talking about. But he gave me some frozen walleye that he had caught. Eh, he caught about a month ago it's been frozen in a solid block of ice which is how you want to freeze fish so feeling good about it we're gonna cook that up for you guys thanks john for hooking me up and i was thinking about walleye and i was thinking like how can i get creative do something different i've done walleye a couple times on the show done them beer battered which i think is the way to do them really and i was thinking well i'm not gonna fry them i'm gonna do something and then i realized nah like we're gonna cook up walleye the way God intended, we're gonna fry them, batter them and fry them. But I am gonna do them a different way than I've ever done fish before. This is a recipe that will impress your friends. It's super easy. It sounds crazy fancy. And that's the important thing, because it's really not hard. But we're gonna do some Parmesan crusted walleye. Sounds fancy, right? It's super easy. If you follow the show, a lot of these steps are not going to divert from the other fish that we fried, except for the with the, the batter, the, the breading. Can't go wrong with walleye. You can't mess it up. But we're going to kind of pan saute this panko crusted walleye. It's going to be phenomenal. So let's get started. This is going to be quick and easy, short and sweet and delicious. Let's do it. Okay, so first step, we're gonna mix up our breading. And now I went and bought, I'm doing this whole dish kind of Italian style to go with the Parmesan theme. So I got some Italian style panko breadcrumbs. And we're gonna do that, not quite 50-50, a little more panko to grated Parmesan. Grated, meaning like the powdered, powdery Parmesan. A lot of Parmesan. We're gonna mix in with these panko breadcrumbs 
and that's gonna give it that amazing crust and that great Parmesan and Italian flavor. That's gonna be our final breading. So we're gonna mix these up. We've got the panko, we've got our Parmesan. Whew, so much Parmesan. And we're just gonna mix this up by hand, get it nice and thoroughly blended together. Okay. And so the process for frying these fish is gonna be put the fish in flour, and then an egg. And now when I'm eating eggs, I'm kind of a snob. I buy the cage free, organic, meh, 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 meh. But when I'm frying fish and eggs, nah. Cheapos, the all white pasteurized, who knows what they do to these eggs, but we're balling on a budget here. So Jen always makes fun of me. She says that every time I make eggs, scrambled eggs for her and the kids, I get eggshells in there. But we're looking good right now. Stab each one and then whisk these guys together. Okay, eggs are good to go, flour, panko, parmesan mixture, all good to go. Now let's prep our fillets. John knows how to take care of his fish, as any guide should, and he froze this fish with water in the bag all the way up so that when it freezes, it's in essentially a tomb of ice, a block of ice. Freezer burn happens from oxygen around the fish. And so by freezing your fish in water, your fish will come out six months later just as fresh tasting as when you put it in the freezer. We're gonna take these out, but because they were frozen in water, they are wet. And we're gonna dry these pieces off. Super important whenever you're frying fish, and it's gonna end up with much crispier fish if they're not wet when you batter them. Okay, so to season these fish up, I'm gonna use the Traeger Fin and Feather Rub. I have no affiliation with Traeger. I just love this stuff. We're gonna season generously, and then we'll flip these over and finish her off. And there we go. So normally when I'm frying fish, I'm gonna use something like vegetable oil or canola oil. But for this fish, for the panko Parmesan crusted fish, I'm not gonna be deep frying them. So I'm gonna have the oil about halfway up the fish fillet, really thin. I don't have to use so much. I'm gonna be using extra virgin olive oil, which is really my favorite tasting oil. And I can actually afford to use it for this dish because I don't have to use a ton of it. And we're using a cast iron skillet we're gonna take our fish fillets, drop them in the flour, get them nice and completely coated, shake off any excess. We're gonna go into the egg and then right into our panko parmesan mixture. And this is where it's super critical. Make sure this thing is just covered. We'll shake off the excess and lay it in the oil. And that sizzle is what you're looking for. Rinse and repeat and get about half these guys down in one batch and then do it all over again. And once you got this started, you're really kind of in it to win it. Your hands get all nasty. But as soon as one side is golden brown, you're going to flip it. And by the time the second side is golden brown, they're going to be cooked through. The fish does not take long. Do not overcook your fish. OK, I think first piece ready to come off. Look at that. Probably this first guy is ready to flip. By the time I get the fourth one down, yeah. Now these pieces are a little thicker, so I'll cook them, let them cook a little bit longer. There we go. All right, easy, quick. Last piece is coming off now. It looks phenomenal. I'm excited to try this. This is gonna be fantastic. Okay, so typically in these cast and cooks, a lot of times I don't show the side dishes or whatever, but basically I'm gonna put this Parmesan crusted walleye on some pasta with a little mushroom cream sauce. I had some mushrooms in the fridge, it's nothing special, but I'm gonna put it on some pasta, but you can serve this with anything. The important thing is the fish, and because the important thing is the fish, we're gonna try a piece right now. My mouth is already watering because it smells so fantastic. But look at this, you guys. Just crispy, crunchy, Parmigiani, golden brown. Let's do the old break apart test. Still steaming. Look at that. Look at that. This is white, flaky fish. As white and flaky as it gets. As fish, as freshwater fish gets. It looks fantastic. It's going to be hot. It's about to hurt me. You guys, walleye is so mild and just tender. 
it's moist, it's still, it's juicy, it did not dry out because we didn't overcook it. And then the outside, this panko parmesan, it's got that tanginess from the parmesan, but more importantly, it's got that crunch from the panko. And not like a heavy crunch, this light, airy crunch. And on the inside is this moist, juicy, tender walleye fillets, white as it gets. That is a fantastic pairing. In the past, I've always beer battered my walleye because in terms of like a fish and chips type dish, you can't go wrong with that. But this right here, this might beat that. This might be my new favorite way to cook walleye. I've never done this with walleye. And it's fantastic. I don't even see that there. The white fish, it's flaking off, it holds together, but then this crust has like a life of its own. It's, it's kind of separated from the fish there where I broke it in half because it's just so crunchy. It's like these two things have come together to make a delicious bite of fish. Good Lord. You guys, Parmesan crusted walleye. Can't beat that. Cannot beat that. Mm. I don't even want to wait for the pasta to be done. That's fantastic. Yeah, we're going for another piece. Look at that. That's too dang good, y'all. That is phenomenal. All right, and so next up, we're gonna cut up a lemon. You cooking fish, you gotta have lemon before we cut it. We're gonna kind of roll it with our hand, break up the membranes, get a little more juice out of it. And finally, we've got some Italian parsley we're gonna chop up. It just adds some freshness, some color, we're gonna go down with some spaghetti. And then we're gonna go in with some of our mushroom cream sauce. But again, you could just use a store-bought red sauce or whatever. I just kind of use some, some ingredients I had on hand. Then we're gonna go with our fish. Bam, bam. Make it look all fancy. The Italian long leaf parsley. And I mean, I hope you see what I'm talking about. This meal was brown and yellow and gray. And you throw a bunch of parsley on there and look at that now. Like mother nature approves. And then last thing, we're gonna take this lemon and squeeze a little bit of lemon, mostly on the fish, but it's gonna drizzle off into our pasta. There it is, still steaming. And that's a good looking plate of food. I don't care who you are. And that parsley really makes it. When you're frying fish, throw some green on there. It makes it twice as appealing. Okay, y'all. Well, first off, I'd like you to note that I'm, I'm down here on my knees, basically, because cooking and filming this stuff for you guys, not easy. Well, I think we did it. I think we did it. And so I'm down here so that you guys can see me because I don't want to have to move the camera again. But we're going to take a little, little bite of fish, and we're going to take some of this pasta and this mushroom cream sauce. We're going to try this but I already know the fish is phenomenal. You see it steaming, I'm a little scared. You got, if you're not jealous right now, you don't have taste buds. And now only because I love you guys did I bring this up to eye level. I took the time out of stuffing my face to move the camera. Once again, like that is just a beautiful bite of food right there. It's got everything you want, the, the moist, juicy fish, it's mild, it's flaky, it's so fantastic. It's got that delicious crunch on the outside. And then you get the smooth, creamy pasta to kind of contrast that crunch. Um, <laughs> that is good. I wish you were all here. Walleye, you guys, catch them, chase them. They're not always easy. I have I learned today that sometimes <laughs> You got to work hard for it. But what I've also learned tonight is that that work is well worth the effort. Nebraska, you guys talk about a hidden gem. Thank you again, John. Thank you, Big Mac Spoiled. Thank you, Nebraska. What a treat. Next up, we're heading up to South Dakota, the Black Hills of South Dakota. This is a place that I have been excited for for a long time. Mount Rushmore is there, but that's not why I'm going. We'll probably swing by and see it. But South Dakota, I got a lot of stuff planned. We're going to be doing fly fishing, kayak fishing. We're going to be exploring the Black Hills, a, a true national monument in this country, a place that should be on your list. Please stick around. I hope to see you next week. Please like, 
comment, subscribe, all that stuff. If you want to support the show, the Stay Trippin' shirt, if you're into road tripping or just travel in general, get you a Stay Trippin' shirt. I found the best blanks, my favorite blanks. Look at me. Total dad bod. My girlfriend's got two kids. That's my excuse. But I got no kids. I got the dad bod running, but with this shirt, you'd never know it. Fits amazing. I love these shirts. They're not very expensive. Check them out. www.yakfish.tv. Links down in the description. Of course, grab a shirt if you want to just help me out. If not, I forgive you. Show up next week. And if you don't, I forgive you. Thanks for watching this episode. It means the absolute world to me. I'm going to enjoy this. I'm starving. I'm so sick of talking. I know you're sick of hearing me. Thank you, guys. I love you. Truly. I'll see you next week. South Dakota, the Black Hills. We're going to be doing all kinds of fishing, all kinds of exploring. It's going to be epic. Please join me. But if not, I'm having a good time regardless. Cheers, you guys. Have a great night. I um. go <laughs> no way, dude! You guys, Parmesan, crusted, walleye. Can't beat that. Cannot beat that. Mm.